Well, today we're back on an audio project, and this is one I uh, felt was kind of interesting because of the technology that was in it. It uses a Class D audio amplifier, but, you know, uh, a lot of hams these days are using Class E amplifiers, and these things are a lot more efficient than what we've used in the past. So let's take a look at this uh, cheap Class D amplifier. This week on Smoke and Solder, we're going to build a highly efficient 15-watt stereo Class D amplifier using a kit supplied by our friends at parts-express.com. It's part number 320-322, and it's made by Sure Electronics. This features a Texas Instruments TPA3122D2 Class D amplifier. That means it's a digital circuit. However, it has very low parts count, and it's only $19.90. For the grand unboxing, we pull out the PC board and an audio cable. Now, the PC board is double-sided. Looks like a nice quality with a good solder mask on it. This is a through-hole kit, so there are no surface mount components. And all our components come packaged in a little box here. We've got a handful of resistors, some capacitors. Uh, we've got uh, one chip, some inductors, uh, some connectors, and a little switch that allows us to set the gain of the unit. And here's the most amazing part. There's only one active component, this little chip right here, and it doesn't even require a heat sink to make 15 watts per channel. It can operate anywhere from 10 to 30 volts, so we've got a wide power supply range we can work with. There's really no instructions here, only a layout of the PC board and a schematic. However, the PC board is marked pretty well as to what component is what, so if you've ever built anything before, this should be fairly simple to do, and there's not really that many parts either. So let's get started. I'll begin by putting in all the resistors, and every resistor in this kit is 10K, so we really can't mess that up. Just put them in the holes marked as resistors. Recently I asked, How do you know when it's time for a new soldering tip? <laughs> well, when it starts to look like this. Notice how it's eating away there. Well, after a couple of tries, I finally got the right size tip, and that's an ST1 from my Weller soldering iron. It's a 1 16th inch pencil tip, and I have several different sizes. I also use a 1 32nd for surface mount components. After we've soldered all the resistors in, I've got a handful of 1 microfarad capacitors that I'll install, and next we'll move on to the socket for the IC. You'll notice one end has an indent in it, and you match that up with the indent that's on the board so that we can identify where pin one is located. Now that we've got the IC socket mounted, we've got some more capacitors. These are 0.68 microfarad mylar capacitors. They're a little larger. Now they probably could have found 0.68 microfarad monolithic capacitors like the one microfarads we just put in, and they certainly would have been cheaper. Why didn't they do that? Well, if we take a closer look at the schematic, we'll notice that all the one microfarad capacitors are used in positions that would be considered bypassing or eliminating an unwanted signal. For the coupling between audio stages, they're using the 0.68 microfarads, so audio is flowing through that, and they wanted a better quality capacitor. All capacitors are not created equal. I'll continue mounting the smaller components like the LED, and the one diode that we have here, because if I put the larger components on now, it may make it difficult to get to the positions where the smaller ones need to be. Now, our diode is polarized, and you see one end is marked here. We need to point that in the same direction that the arrow points on the board. The LED is also polarized. The negative side is usually flat, and the positive lead is usually longer, so we put the longer lead toward plus on the board. And we've also got a handful of electrolytic capacitors that need to be installed here. They're polarized as well. The negative side is usually marked. And there again, the positive is usually the longer of the two leads. So we need to make sure that we put that in correctly on the board as well. To get this rolling, I think we need to do a little speed soldering.
Of course, any good speed soldering job requires speed snipping as well. One day we're going to have to cover these techniques. It's really not that hard if you've got the right software. <laughs> uh. Now let's install the little level setting switch. And we'll also install the two inductors in the output circuit, a couple of RCA connectors for the inputs, and there's some holes drilled there that you could put in screw terminals if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use the RCA connectors. And we'll put in the power jack. And here again, they've also put two little screw holes up there where we could put in a little terminal strip if we wanted to. And I think I'm going to do that so I can power this without using that jack if I'd like. Now I'll put in the integrated circuit. You'll notice there's a little notch here on the end. And we match that up with the notch down on the socket. Now all I've got left to do is put on some kind of output connections. They've got holes here where you could put screws into the board for screw terminals. Also some little holes so that we could use some of these little barrier strips like I used on the power. And I happen to have some of those, so that's what I'll use. We've completed the kit now, and that was a lot of fun. So there's only one thing left to do.